Good morning, church. Have you ever wanted a better tomorrow? In these COVID times, we just don't want a better tomorrow. We'd like a better year. Amen on that. Of course, we all want a better tomorrow because the inadequacies of today are on display. The world is not yet what God desires. So what does Jesus teach us about how to actualize a better tomorrow? This quick hitting series of parables all begin with the kingdom of heaven is like. Jesus was not just talking about a kingdom that was some other place and some other time. The kingdom that Jesus taught about was in the here and in the now. To begin to grasp what Jesus meant, you have to know what other options were available in Jesus' day. As Judeans living under Roman rule, they certainly knew about the kingdom, the Roman Empire. In that kingdom, Caesar was king and lord and even believed to be divine. It didn't take long to understand how life was to be lived under Roman occupation. The way for a better tomorrow was to worship Caesar, pay your taxes, and not cross Rome. If you did this, the promise was that Caesar and the gods of Rome would look favorably upon you. Rome's better tomorrow was knowing and keeping your place in the empire ruled and run by Caesar. It might have been better for the Roman elite, the wealthy and the powerful, but not so much for the common man and woman or subjugated people. In the Jewish tradition that Jesus was raised in, there was the apocalyptic option. This is what John the Baptist was offering out in the desert. John was in the wilderness calling people to repent of their sins and prepare for the Son of Man that was coming. John was an apocalyptic preacher, getting people ready for the time when God's Messiah would come and clean up the world by ending the world as they knew it. John thought the world would come to an end in his lifetime. God would come and bring justice, rewarding the righteous and punishing the wicked. In all apocalyptic thought, God is coming back to clean up the world via some sort of catechismic battle. John the Baptist was wrong. God never did end the world to bring about a better tomorrow like he preached. And that's why Jesus, who was once a disciple of John, changed course and offered a different view, a different way of how God works in the world and how to bring about that better tomorrow. Jesus said the kingdom of God is like. When Jesus uses this phrase, he is asking us to imagine how God would rule and reign as if God were on the throne and not Caesar. John's image of God was that God would come in power and force and might and clean up the world through violence and destruction. Jesus' image of God was one of a loving father, a loving parent that wanted earth to be like heaven. But we, we were to bring about peace and justice ourselves. And the violence and the destruction that is the way of the world is not an option in the way of Jesus. John wanted his wilderness followers to renounce the world and prepare for the end. Jesus wanted his followers to engage the world and take up their role to bring about a better tomorrow. The Baptist was preparing for the end. Jesus was preparing us for a new beginning. So how? So how would we enact this new beginning for a better tomorrow? Well, Jesus says, watch me and enact and give birth to these values in your living. The values of love, peace, justice, 
the values of human dignity and compassion, the values of equality and integrity and forgiveness, to just begin to name a few. Tomorrow will be better if and when and as we live out these values with each other in our communities, in our families, in our workplace, on Facebook and Twitter, and even toward our enemies. Jesus teaches us in this parable or in this series of parables, start small. For small acts of love, small acts of kindness and justice, small acts of peace and forgiveness, these small acts grow and mature into larger realities. Start small. The kingdom of heaven, he said, is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes like a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nest in its branches. Start small. In just a few moments, Vicki will sing a song about how her grandmother's small acts of love grew into a sustaining love that offered that better tomorrow for her family. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Start small. It's small acts of living as Jesus lived that will produce the shelter of a large tree, a shelter that makes a better tomorrow for a child who is hungry a shelter that makes a better tomorrow for a gay teenager from being harassed and bullied, a shelter that makes a better tomorrow for a homeless person in need of housing and a new beginning. Your small acts of kingdom living will nurture the seeds of new beginnings and sheltering growth in the kingdom. Jesus calls us to engage the people around us, engage our neighbors, our schoolmates, our co-workers with the kingdom values that Jesus taught and lived himself. God has created us in God's image and designed us to be co-creators to bring about the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. The hope, brothers and sisters, for a better tomorrow will arrive because we have loved our neighbor in small but sheltering ways. This morning, on this beautiful morning that we have here, this morning let us imagine anew our role in God's kingdom. Our role is to engage the world until this world reflects the world that God dreamed it to be. God is asking you this day, will you join me in creating a better tomorrow? I invite you to say yes. I hope you say yes. God rejoices in your yes. Amen.